Hello colleagues. Uh, many of our customers are very special and they do absolutely amazing and sometimes even crazy uh, things. Uh, and this is just another very special case and uh, let me show it a bit. Um, he's a friendly little robot that's super good at only one thing, setting up a butt ton of dominoes really, really fast. So this is the robot. As you see, it's pretty crazy robot that is doing the domino stuff. And of course, as any robot, it needs a positioning. And I just came across uh, on YouTube by accident, accidents, and uh, of course, I couldn't uh, uh, not to point that there is a beacon. There is a mar mar mind a beacon for positioning. The guys actually approached us in April saying that uh, you are not helping us well and we didn't know who they are etc uh while well, i went to twitter and accidentally found that uh, uh, you know the, the the guys are pretty prominent uh, on twitter and even more prominent on youtube yeah so you can watch uh, the original video uh just a few comments from our side the robot is first of all great and this is the real robot and i would really recommend everyone to look how it is built because it is built uh, with many good and essential things in it now first of all as just mentioned it is designed for a particular single task that's probably the key element for modern robots if you try to build a robot that would be doing everything for everyone then most probably it will not do anything for anyone uh, but one particular thing tuned for this and it can beat a human so in this particular case it easily uh, beat uh, the human in putting this because it was using completely different approach in uh, building the domino and the robot needs a localization there are several ways you can do this optical lidars and us so uh, i'm happy uh, to see that eventually the guys chose us uh, for uh, positioning and they did it perfectly as I see because they did it for location and direction as you see there is a quite large base between the station beacons if each station beacon oh sorry mobile beacons and if mobile each mobile beacon can give you plus minus two centimeter accuracy then with this base you can have I guess uh, fewer than uh, one degree uh, accuracy of uh, robots position and since you have a pretty uh, solid frame, then you will have and precise location and precise direction at the same time. Absolutely, you know, according to the blueprint and how it must be done. Okay, we jumped a bit further. And as you can see, the small dot is not just a dot. It's a moral mind stationary beacon. So in order to position the mobile robot, you need uh, a modem a central controller of the system, one per system, uh, stationary beacons. This one, I guess there must be another one, another one, another one. So for 2D tracking, for example, like this, it would be sufficient only uh, two mobile beacons. For example, here and here. Okay, the guys placed like this, that's also fine. And uh, two mobile beacons on the robot in order to get location and direction. Also, I really like like, mark uh, points the original idea and how this idea over the years was morphed to the end uh, robot. Uh, just watch it. How exactly do you reload it? And how would it know? You see, reloading, uh, moving, placing, localizing, etc. All these are separate tasks and doesn't necessarily you need to solve them in the same way. So they did really brilliantly on all these ways. And I really like <coughs> that they didn't try to build in you know, a human way. Because humans are doing one, one by one, one by one. Okay, humans have uh, you know, better fingers and uh, better capabilities in many ways, but they cannot do 300 pieces at once. But the robot can do that. So they did it perfectly from this direction as well. 
exactly where to drop each domino and what color it should be. And how do you make it so reliable that it doesn't screw up once in 100,000 drops of a domino? A system to reliably tackle issues at scales like this is just going to be inherently super complex. Here we were. Now before I show you how it all works, I first wanted to put him in a head-to-head -head competition to see how good he was. You see? Uh, they, they do employ uh, ready-to-use stuff, and that's another great element. Uh, like many of our other customers, you know, if you need positioning, of course you can in reinvent the wheel, and sometimes that's good, and it's very good. But sometimes when you build something more complex, like the whole robot, it's easier to take navigation from us, for example, than the camera from, let's say, another supplier, then they had uh, lovely motors, controllers, and then they built the system. Yeah, it may not look pretty from layman point of view, but from my point of view, it's absolutely excellent and brilliant robot. <laughs> oh my God. So wow. And look, so this is the mobile beacon, this is the mobile beacon, and once again, uh, spot the station beacons on the walls. Dominoes at once was really the key that helped us crack the scale and reliability issues, and it's probably my favorite part. I love it. I really love it. The guys did like, like it really must be done. So this is the thing which does the job, and it's done not in the human way. It's done in the robotics way, and separately, by the way. So there is a separate machine which is putting, loading, uh, uh, you know. The, the massive 300 pieces at once, great. So they're using wheels, again, special wheels, which allow them to turn at one spot and move different directions. You know, for, for the robot, you don't need a nice chassis. You need the easy chassis because you need to do many, many, many adjustments. You know, don't limit yourself, put huge batteries and don't worry about them at all. Of course, you know, use something ready like this one like this one like like uh, motor controllers uh, cameras and uh, then you know assemble the robot and that's it and then you can tune then they can polish they, they can do something but don't limit yourself right from the beginning do as uh, or use as uh, proven systems um, uh, as possible in the beginning at least and then you can polish something a bit later I'd love to see the beacons uh, okay so you can see so this is mobile uh, station beacon, this is station beacon, and the mobile beacons on the robot uh, you have seen already a few times. But this is much faster because he doesn't have to wait. He just comes in here to the docking station and the lower platform slides over so the bottom layer of 300 dominoes gets loaded up all at once. And we also had a back... Which is great. This is absolutely great, you see? Uh, their loading and driving was a separate thing. So it meant that while the robot, uh, the mobile robot is placing uh, the dominoes and driving around and they're, uh, they're packing the cooker robot, uh, can do the parallel. That's great because the humans cannot do, okay, more than one human can do this, uh, but if it's a single human, a human can do either placing their dominoes or packing uh, or moving, etc. Uh, the robots can do this in parallel which, you know, speeds up significantly. Let's watch further. Backup loading system using a tray, just in case at any point the robot arm wasn't working. Besides the Hot Wheels tracks, there's a ton of 3D printed parts throughout the build that we either printed ourselves, or if we were in a pinch, my No, as I mentioned, that's absolutely great approach. This is what we do as well. Uh, you know, currently as I speak behind me, there's a printer and a couple of more in front of me. Uh, easy, flexible use them as we do. Friends at Matter Hacker helped us out. So that's the loader. Now how about the dominator himself? How does Dom know exactly where to go in the room to drop a domino? So we've and that is the key point about my own mind. It was a short one, uh, but pretty essential, frankly speaking, because in one way or another, you do need to know the location. Again, uh, I would say uh, it could be us, it could be lighters, or it could be optical plus uh, odometry. But since they're using these special wheels, 
I guess the odometry was not as precise and optical plus odometry may be not uh, precise enough. But many robots they do, you know, Kiva robots, which became um, uh, Amazon robots, they using, and majority of um, other robots are using this optical plus odometry way of positioning, which is great sometimes, but sometimes not, uh, because not always you can place uh, QR codes or some other optical uh, elements on the floor in order to eliminate the accumulated errors uh, by their odometer. And uh, often these optical uh, labels, uh, they, they are wearing out. So you need to do something with them. Uh, you cannot do this, uh, let's say you cannot pl place the QR codes uh, above, because then you don't need, like on the ceiling, then you don't need enough uh, accuracy. So this is why there are not too many solutions that give uh, centimeter level accuracy and Marrow Mind, of course, is great, particularly for precise tracking. Pre-programmed the route for all 102,000 dominoes, so the robot knows exactly where to go right from the start. Then, as we're driving around, we use these indoor GPS sensors to track the position of the robot so it knows... So do, those are exactly uh, our stuff roughly where it is, and then as we get closer to the place the dominoes need to drop, we use these IR cameras. Which is absolutely great. So there's no point for, uh, let's say, trying to get uh, something which you can achieve closer, like optical, for example. So the sensor fusion, sensor fusion, sensor fusion is the key. And that's a great sensor fusion between odometry, maybe they're using, I don't know the details, us, and optical, because optical, the closer you come, the higher the accuracy you can get, and you can adjust against not absolute coordinates of the room. You don't need, you need to adjust against their local things, like objects, like domino pieces. So this is why the combination between uh, several uh, sensors or several inputs is, there, is the best approach that are tracking markers on the ground to make sure the robot lines up perfectly every single time. So the vision for... Which is, again, one more time, a great approach. Use a sensor combination. Combine different types of sensor inputs because none of them are good enough for all the cases. Uh, which is the best for your particular case? It depends on the case. For people tracking, it's one story. For drones, another story. For virtual reality, third. For robots of this type, is fourth. Uh, forklifts, uh, boats, uh, you know, humans, they have very, very many different ways. And the approach is slightly different. But the, their approach in terms of sensor fusion is common. It's only a combination of what sensor inputs you can use. Is that we could set DOM up, we could turn off the lights and leave, and come back the next morning and you've got like a full field of dominoes set up. And that is the most, uh, you know, rewarding that you can do something really autonomous. And this autonomous, you give the task and forget. You know, and then the robot just drives. You, yes, you do monitor. Yes, you do uh, control it. Uh, but if everything is set up and uh, the task is not interrupted by something, then you just come and the job is done. It, it is very satisfying. You can work all night in the dark just fine. All right, now how about these super cool wheels? So these are called... Yeah, th those are absolutely perfect wheels. We are not using them uh, because usually they are a bit expensive and they work pretty well on these kind of surfaces. Uh, but for their particular case, absolutely brilliant and uh, exactly what must be used. Omni wheels, and they're awesome because they let you translate it any direction you want. So this is way better than like your car, where if you need to move a little bit to the left or right, you have to make like a five point turn. So with these guys, you can move any direction you want to adjust for small corrections in the placement of the dominoes. Yeah, that's that's important task because uh, this is why we are um, using you know tank like uh, rotation. So our robots are usually can turn on the point exactly because uh, otherwise you would need to move many times back, forth, left, right, uh, and often you don't have their space. So in their case, they can really move in each direction. In our case, you can turn and move a bit for, uh, forward or backward. Uh, it's on the spot, so it's not like on the car, it's like a tank. 
um, uh, but with Omni wheels, uh, it's even easier we can, because you can move from any direction using this, uh, you know, special. But uh, limitation is also obvious. So it, it, it is relatively expensive and it cannot drive on, uh, let's say, all conditions, like industrial conditions. But otherwise, uh, the robot is great. L let me slow down and finish. Absolutely great. I'm happy to present that uh, uh, our customers are building absolutely amazing stuff, and I hope you will build uh, something like this or even uh, more fancy. Thank you very much.